This is an infinity monitor I made, and this thing is amazing. It just goes on forever. But before I get too deep into it, I want to show you how we actually made this thing. It all started with this old monitor I bought. It's an LCD monitor. It's got VGA and DVI inputs on it. Now, we just gotta rip it apart. Remove the foot, take off the back panel, take out some screws, and remove the leg. Next, I needed to split the housing. So I took a long flat tool and started prying it open. Just be mindful, there are some wires kinda hidden in there, just like that. And just pop it open. Time to remove the front buttons. Now the panel's free. You can see the power supplies on the back of it. Had to cut off some tape which was holding it on, remove a couple cables, and it popped right off. I noticed there was two lonely crayon marks on the back of my monitor, so I grabbed my own and I decided to connect the line. For this next part, I was honestly a lot rougher on it than I should have been, and it was a lot harder than it looks, but I did manage to get it open. That's the backlight, and that's the LCD panel. I decided to plug in the backlight by itself because I've never seen one by itself and I'm happy I did. Looks pretty cool. And this is the LCD panel and it's translucent. I think that's awesome. This next part of the build was definitely my favorite part. It was the part where you go and test the LCD panel and realize it's flashing, it's blinking, it won't display, and it's totally broken. Oh, guess it's time to give up. Never. I will never give up. In fact, it's time to go to eBay right now and you guessed it, we're getting that same monitor. Except this time, I'm going to double down. Now that the monitors were on their way, I became super impatient waiting for them. I just couldn't stop checking the time. I know, I'll play some magic to pass the time. Actually, I got a better idea. I got the broken panel, I'm gonna take some measurements, I'm gonna drop some crude, very basic blueprints, and I'm gonna build the housing for it. Evenly cut fresh wood is satisfying. Tell me that doesn't look nice. Now it was time to groove it up. Delicious. One, two, and three. Whoa, Nelly. This thing is solid. Now for the power supply. I removed it from its housing, I grabbed some Tupperware, I put it inside of it, I put the lid on it, and I had myself some nice lunch for tomorrow. I plan on using the Tupperware to hold the power supply, so I marked some holes where some wires had to go. I planned on using that knife to cut it out, but it wasn't good enough, so I used my old soldering iron that the tip fell off of, and I melted a bunch of holes in. I don't recommend this because it's nasty, it's smelly, but I did in the garage. It gets the job done, but it's just uh, pretty gross. So it's time to tuck in the power supply, and honestly, it looks pretty good. Now the thing's a little wibbly, so I threw on some legs for some extra stability, and man, this thing is a rock. Now for how infinity mirrors work. You're gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need a mirror, you're gonna need a light source, and you're gonna need a one-way mirror. And a one-way mirror is pretty much a mirror, but if you shine light through it, it actually shines through it as well as reflecting from it. So what I plan on doing is I'm going to take the LCD panel, I'm going to put it between a mirror and the one-way mirror with the light source, and have the light bounce back and forth between the LCD panel, reflecting infinitely. I did manage to get the LCD panel to stop flickering, but it is still broken on the top part. I still ended up using the broken panel to test out the rig, and if you see here, it's just way too dark and you can't see the infinity effect and this this will just this won't do at all while i'm brainstorming for a new idea i decided to play with the broken lcd panel i removed the polarizing filter and i took away the mirror in front of it and you can see it's just a blank white screen until you hold up the filter kind of magical like and it's also transparent you can see my fingers through it this itself is really cool and make a really cool video itself and I could have just made the video about this but I came out with the idea of making an infinite repeating monitor that looks like an infinity mirror and that's something I'm going to hold myself to and I'm really going to get it done. So let's get it started. So it got me thinking about that banana, how you can see it through a one way mirror. I think I got an idea. I'm going to take a monitor, put it where that banana is, have it shine through a one-way mirror, and reflect off of another one-way mirror so that the image will bounce back and forth infinitely between them, and since they're both one-way mirrors, I'll still be able to look inside of it and see it. 
Gotta make some changes. These gotta move to the sides and the power supplies gotta move down. Now it's time to make this thing look professional. Got myself some pre-stain right here and I got myself some dark wood stain. I love staining on my wood projects. It's simple, it's easy, it just makes the wood look so much nicer, it looks way more professional, and I'm just all for it. Now it's time to get serious, time to glove up. I'm a huge believer in stain everything you own, and what I mean by that is, well, say you got yourself an old piece of wood you found outside, go ahead, hit it with a little bit of stain, it's just gonna make it look so much nicer. Or, you got some old magic cards you want to update the look of? Go ahead, hit them with a little bit of stain. The darker the better, just gives it that much more character. Or, lastly, say you got an old Xbox controller you don't know what to do with. You know what? Go ahead, hit it with a little bit of stain. You know what they say, you can't go wrong by staining your electronics. It's looking real good. Beautiful. Time to say goodbye to your new white towel. And just go ahead and start staining. He's staining some wood. Yeah, stain that wood. He's staining some wood. Yeah, stain that wood. Now look at that wood. It's all good. Look at that wood. It's all good. This is a part of the staining process when you look down and realize your glove has failed you and you wonder why you even put on a glove in the first place. Oh well, just gotta keep on staining. Just keep staining. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. This thing looks so much nicer than it did before. I mean, just rewind the video a couple minutes and tell me which one looks better. My bet is on this one. I mean, come on, look at that. It's beautiful. Guess what just arrived? It's the same monitors. This one works, and the other one does too. And this feels like deja vu. I wish I kept a counter for how many times I've taken apart this whole thing. Probably at least 20 times. Now I'm gonna slide in the LCD, and the backlight's still attached to this one. Then I go ahead and put a one-way mirror in front of it, then a one-way mirror in front of that mirror, then I cap them off, then I put a piece of clear acrylic in front of that for protection, screw it all down, and this thing is looking slick. The last thing that I gotta do is, I gotta plug stuff in. Plug in the backlight, plug in the video cable, plug in the power and the video, and one final touch, and boom, this thing is beautiful. I'm super happy with the way this turned out. I'm really happy I didn't give up on it. I'm really happy that I didn't just settle for a different video, that I just went full steam ahead and I got exactly what I wanted. I made an infinity mirror monitor and this thing is sweet. Uh, it's, is it practical? I don't know, but I, I wanted to see it. I needed to see it. I needed to make it and I wanted to share it. And this thing is awesome. It really is. I took some still pictures because I don't have a good low light camera, so hopefully these stills really give it justice to what it looks like in person. But this thing is awesome. It definitely works better at night, but still, this thing is amazing. Uh, this is a video of some fire I took last year, and it's cool. When you move to the side and up and down of it, the background images kind of move with it. It feels like you're moving around a three-dimensional object when really it's just a flat screen reflecting light between a bunch of mirrors. It's just such a weird effect, and I absolutely love it. This is a cube I did in Microsoft Paint. It's just a cube with a yellow background, and... It looks so bizarre when you move to the side of it. It looks like the ones in the background just kind of follow it. I decided to game a little bit. I was using my laptop for the output, so I can't game a lot on it. And I tried this game called Unpossible. It is an obstacle avoidance game that's crazy to look at even without a monitor like this. And honestly, the whole time, it made me feel like I had cross eyes and it made me feel kind of dizzy. Uh, but I did better than I thought. And that game is just hard in general. Even looking at like the start menu in this is just really cool. Even just like the search bar, the infinite Google, this thing is just 
I'm I'm super happy. I'm super geek geeked about it. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, this is some footage of a bird I took, kind of ethereal looking. It's got some like waves to it and some layers, and some footage of a bee that I took in the past as well. Just some some cool way to test it. If you can think of anything I should do with this or test on it, I'd love to hear it. And I just want to say thanks for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you all in the next one.